Welcome everyone, so it is Sega September and this week we are having a look at Sega on the PSP. So I've just had a little look through my collection and found five games that we're going to talk about that are on the PSP that are made or developed by Sega. So let's get into it. So the first game on the list is Tenchu Time of Assassins. This game was made by K2 and released in Europe under Sega. This absolutely fantastic game comes under the stealth genre on the PSP. This game is definitely one of the greats on the PSP. The story is engaging, the narrative is well crafted and let's be fair, this game is just an absolute beast. There is an absolute ton of twists in this game that are absolutely great. So as stated earlier, this game is all about stealth. In this game, you play as four different ninjas, Rikamiro, Ayami, Teshu, and Rin, who set out to unravel history itself. The main objective of the game is to navigate through intricate levels filled with guards, traps, and environmental hazards. This game also came out on the Wii, however, you had to do the silly waggle controls for that, so this is definitely my preferred way to play this game. This series started originally on the PS1 and went all the way up to PSP and Wii. Unfortunately, this series isn't around anymore and I would like to see more, but there are some fantastic games to play through, so I'd highly recommend playing this PSP classic. As a lot of the levels will require careful planning and precise execution, successfully assassinating targets without detection is immensely satisfying and rewards the player their patience and strategies. So it's definitely going to make you think on your toes. So if you're looking for a classic Sega game that's very colourful and original, you've got Puyo Pop Fever. It's a delightful and addictive puzzle game that adds a fresh twist to the classic falling block puzzle genre. Originally, it was released for the Game Boy Advance and PS2, and of course the PSP. This game was set out to take on the juggernaut that is Tetris on the original Game Boy, and it does it really well. This game is super colourful, it's frantic, and it's an experience that everybody needs to play. At its core, Puyo Pop Fever involves matching colour gelatinous blobs called Puyos as they fall from the top of the screen. The goal is pretty simple, just to create chain blocks of four. This game is super easy to play and really simple. However, in this version, there is a little bit of a twist. There is a mode called Fever Mode. Fever Mode unleashes a series of predetermined chain reactions, adding an exciting element of strategy as you work to trigger the right moment for the maximum points. Puyo Puyo has always been known for its visuals and its bright colours, and this does not disappoint at all. This game always screams Sega to me, and it's definitely a must-play on the PSP. So after you get past the sort of 16-bit genre, there are a few games that kind of stand out to me, and one of those games was Crazy Taxi on the Dreamcast. Well, the PSP had a port of Crazy Taxi in Crazy Taxi Fair Wars. If you've ever played Crazy Taxi before, you'll know exactly what to expect from this game. It's just on the PSP. There's just something about this game that is just so great. So in that likelihood that you've never played Crazy Taxi before, you step into the shoes of a taxi driver in a bustling city and your objective is to pick up characters and take them to their destinations. This is arcade racing at its finest. You'll swerve and drift and boost through traffic and off ramps and narrowly avoiding obstacles along the way. This is one of those classic, easy to pick up but hard to master sort of games. Another thing the series has been known for is its soundtracks and it does not disappoint here either. Whilst there isn't anything majorly different in this game, it's still fast paced with its arcade style action. It's perfect for quick gaming sessions on the go. I still go back to this game over and over because it is just that fantastic so get out and play some Crazy Taxi. If you've ever been looking for a sci-fi action adventure role playing game on the PSP, this is where you need to come. This game was originally released in the late 80s and then redone in the late 2000s. If you're a fan of the Alien series, you'll feel right at home here. Set in a futuristic world where you play as Eileen Harden, a skilled space marine, Alien Syndrome throws you into a series of perilous missions to rescue your fellow crew members from a hostile alien infection. This twin stick shooter is an absolute must on the PSP. It feels really arcadey in its style which is, you know, to be expected considering it's based on an arcade game from 1987. This is just a solid over the top shooter that you can't go wrong with. While it may not be groundbreaking in any terms of storytelling or visuals, it really is a solid game with decent mechanics, character progression and cooperative multiplayer. 
If you're a fan of top-down shooters with RPG elements and enjoy battling waves of alien enemies, then Alien Syndrome is definitely worth a look. So this last one is a bit of a cop-out, but at the same time, these are all amazing games. So the Sega Mega Drive collection came out on the PSP, and this houses a lot of games from the original Mega Drive system. There are so many classics in this little compilation of games. You've got Golden Axe, you've got Comic Zones, you've got Columns, you've got Alex Kidd in Enchanted Castle, Altered Beast, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2. Where's my Sonic 3, damn it? Super Thunderblade, Sword of Vermilion, Vector Man, the list just goes on and on and on. There's 28 games in total in here and they are all absolute belters. I can guarantee you'll boot this up and you will not want to stop playing for hours and hours on end. This little collection houses some of the biggest classic games that you'll ever get to play on the Mega Drive. And it really captures the essence of retro gaming, so that's always a win in my books. The emulation is smooth, and there are some insightful extras that make it worthwhile addition to anyone's library. There are also extras that come with this game, such as unlockable content, as it, such as interviews with developers and artwork galleries. This alone is a really good reason to pick this little collection up. So guys, that is my picks for Sega on the PSP. Have you guys seen any of it? I picked this because there is just nothing out there on this, so I thought I'd cover it. There are more games again, so if you enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments below, and we will discuss a few more Sega games that are out there. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and all that fun stuff, and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye!